This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Intersite replication is going to require separate sites and site links. It's also going to utilize a couple of services in order to control replication. And so it's important first to understand the primary services that are responsible for doing this. The first is the KCC or the Knowledge Consistency Checker. The KCC is responsible for generating the topology for the Active Directory Forest. Now keep in mind that intrasite and intersite replications will have different topologies. Uh, so inside the site it will be a little different. In Windows Server 2008, the KCC will also utilize RODCs and it has several enhancements just in the algorithms and the number of connection objects, number of sites that are supported, uh, and how efficiently it operates. Many of them are at a very high level, but there have been some changes to Windows Server 2008 in this area. So the KCC is responsible for automatically generating that topology. The intersite topology generator will manage the intersite topology for replication by defining bridgehead servers. And it'll do that for each individual partition. One domain controller in each site will hold this ISTG role. Uh, and the role can be manually transferred and we can determine or we can identify uh, preferred bridgehead servers. And now, keep in mind that both of these services, while it's important to understand what they're doing, there is actually very little that I will have to, uh, to do on a daily basis to configure these. Uh, the whole idea is that they are automatic. Uh, KCC runs on every domain controller and automatically creates connection objects uh, within the site, between sites. ISTG is responsible for the bridgehead servers. Uh, and so both are automatic services and in most cases do not require a whole lot of configuration. Uh, keep, also keep in mind that inside a site, uh, the KCC is assuming that we have high-speed reliable links. And so it builds a replication topology between all the domain controllers without any regard to the underlying network topology. So it's assuming you're inside the site uh, and you can communicate, you know, kind of on an as-needed basis with no bandwidth constraints. Between sites, however, it's necessary to define site links because the site links are going to help to inform the ISTG of the paths that it should use to create connection objects. We can think of the site really as this logical pathway since it really doesn't have anything to do with the actual underlying network connections, but they are our, our representation of those underlying network uh, connections. But the point is, is you could have one site link and actually have a, uh, a primary link between the two sites, like a T1 line, and then a secondary link, a DSL modem with a VPN connection. Uh, you know, so I mean, there is, it's possible to have two separate connections. The site links do need to be created. There is one site link by default. It's called default first uh, or default IP site link, and it it is connected to the default first site name. Now, when you create a new site, you have to link it. You have to connect it to a link. So your best bet is to create additional links. The additional links will have to uh, contain at least two sites, and it is identifying a possible path for Active Directory replication. It's controlling what the ISTG will do. Uh, because the ISTG will create connection objects automatically for domain controllers in the connected sites. Now, when you create a site link, you have two choices in transport protocol. IP is the first. It's actually using directory services RPC, or remote procedure call, which is the standard method of communication between client and server. This is the default protocol, and it's the preferred protocol for replication. The reason being because there are no restrictions. You do have another option, SMTP, but it's rarely used in the real world because of restrictions. Uh, it requires a certificate authority. It can only replicate the schema and configuration naming context, not the domain naming context. And so it would really only, it's, it's there for the purpose of having a store and forward uh, mechanism and sending replication updates in the form of an email message. 
but typically we don't have a need for that in, in the real world. So when I create a site link, I'll link it to most likely the IP transport protocol, and then I'll connect at least two sites, if not more. The site link then has various properties on it that determine when and how it will be used, when the link's available and when replication should occur. The cost is an arbitrary number that's the preference of the site link. So when multiple links exist, when there are multiple pathways, uh, when you haven't set up a hub and spoke, but you've set up more, more like a mesh connection between sites, then you may have multiple paths. So you use the cost to determine which path uh, should the KCC give preference to. Okay? And it's going to aggregate the cost of multiple site links between two locations. It will add them up uh, and it will always choose the lowest cost route. Okay? The schedule and the frequency. The schedule is the window of time uh, during which the link is available. And so the idea is that I could make the link only available during off, off hours. The frequency is the interval, the frequency of replication within that scheduled window. So when you have two, two sites linked together with a site link, they're not going to replicate all the time. They're only going to replicate within this scheduled window and then only on the frequency that's defined on that site link. If we have uh, a kind of chained approach to our sites, then we need to be very very careful uh, with scheduling these so that convergence doesn't take an abnormal amount of time to get from say site A to site C. And so it just depends on the schedule uh, as to how we, how we set these all up. But usually it's every night and we'll give it several hours to replicate during the evening and a, a frequency where it's happening every hour so that we're sure that all changes can be replicated at that time. But as we said, there's a lot more to configuring inter-site replication than there is for intra-site, which is uh, virtually, you know, non-configurable. There's not really anything that you do. Uh, let's take a look now at another demonstration. In this one, we will uh, create and configure site links between our sites.